Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. What's up, everybody? Welcome to issue four of the Spinner Rack, special WrestleMania edition. I'm Junior alongside Big B, Brian Adams. So, John Pepperella. Yes. All right, so we're getting straight to this. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we posted each one of us on uh, on our blog over at cmxrmx.blogspot.com. We posted predictions for WrestleMania 29. <laughs> WrestleMania 29 was this past Sunday. It's coming on, and we are now ready to see which of our predictions actually came to fruition and what we pretty much thought about the pay-per-view. So let's just take it from the start. The first match on the card that night, Randy Orton, Big Show, and Sheamus versus The Shield. My personal prediction was that it was going to be Chris Jericho, Orton, or actually, no, bullshit. I've got The Shield versus... You don't even know his own <laughs> Yeah, he didn't even know his own stuff. I know. I thought it was Ryback. I thought it would be Ryback. Yeah. No, but I wrote... Sheamus. What I had written Orton. originally was The Shield versus Chris Jericho or Randy Orton, Big Show, and Sheamus. So, I don't know if I'd call that a victory in my prediction. Close enough. That's well, who'd you say was going to win? Shield. I predict Shield to win whoever they end up facing. So, I got that one right. I, pretty, I think we pretty much all got that one. Yeah. Uh, it was a given. It was like they're really maybe their second or third match as a team together. Yeah. Let's see here. You knew that was going down. John, you had it listed under possible matches. Yeah. And you wrote the Shield will probably beat the random team placed in front of them. I'm probably thinking Y2J, Orton, and maybe Show. Beforehand, they were really hyping Sheamus and Wade Barrett. Yeah. And I really wanted to see that. That would have been good. Just two brawlers going against each other. And they didn't do that. Wade Barrett off. wasn't even on the pay-per-view. Yeah, it wasn't even we'll on, he, was on, he was on pre-show. Right. To <laughs> um, Sucks to be Wade Barrett. Yeah. Brian, you had Randy Orton, Sheamus, and Big Show versus The Shield. You called it, man. And you wrote, good. This is going to be. This is going to The Shield. I feel the group has been getting a major push, and that push will continue at WrestleMania. It should be a good match. I like the finish to it. Mm, like, it was a good one. The, the Shield is pretty good at doing their, I guess you want to call it the tag finishes, you know, like one right after the other, yeah. after the other, you know? So like, just, a, like a tandem thing. Yes, right after the thank other. you. They yes, just, exactly. They're pretty good at that, you know? I think yeah. the highlight for me of that match was... Dean Ambrose? Mm-hmm. Dean Ambrose. I believe he was coming off the top rope, and uh, Orton hit him with uh, yeah, okay. the that RKO. Was some, that was, some that was awesome. I thought that, that was, was, was like Seth Rollins. Yeah, Rollins. Seth Rollins. That was an awesome move. Seth man. Rollins like finishing moves now or, or uh, like NXT or whatever was the uh, like a springboard knee to the face. Mm-hmm. I'm like that, that's pretty creative. I mean, not many people have a finisher that's off the ropes other than Rey Mysterio. <laughs> Rey Mysterio. <laughs> he wasn't on the WrestleMania card. That's because he it's sucks. he's battling personal problems. No, that that was the highlight move of the match, though. Oh, Even yeah. though they lost, that RKO in the air was was epic. I did like the fact that Big Show decided to knock everyone the fuck out. When it yeah, I, I totally thought Orton was going to turn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you knew. Well, like the way that they looked at it, or like the way Orton came out and made it look like he was the one that was going to turn. Yeah, with the way he tagged in, mm-hmm. yeah, he hit Seamus on the back of the head, and Big Show was just kind of like, "Dude, what are you doing?" Yeah. You know, I saw that. To me personally, Big Show works better as a face. He's oh more yeah. Mm-hmm. As a heel, he can only go so much. So far, him and like Ryback and Mark Henry, you know. To me, he's not believable as a heel. You can't do the jokey jokes as a heel. Right. Yeah. You can't really be funny it, and be it, a heel. I mean, all right, we all know wrestling is, you know, cape, or I don't want to say the F word, but it is. Scripted. Okay, so <laughs> um, imagine if this was kind of more in the legit range. Do you think Big Show would be getting stomped on as much as he does? Yeah, oh, he'd be enough. dominating, him and Mark Henry. Absolutely What's not. to stop them from being like, let's be tag champs? So yeah. that's it, you know? That'd be a hell of a tag team right there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, I think I saw it coming. Big Show's reaction it started with Sheamus, mm-hmm. tagged in Orton, mm-hmm. then Orton tagged Sheamus back in, and there was that look from the Big Show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw that. And then it happened again. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. All right. So on a one to five scale, what do you give this match? Uh Did it live up to your expectations? You know, I'll give it. Give it I would say yeah. Yeah, it lived up. Okay. What about you, John? Did it live up to your expectations? Just for just for the ending, yeah. In the beginning, I was just kind of like, just seems to me like a regular tag match. But right. at the end, you know, it kind of gave you that little pop. I have to agree. It was it's pretty much what you expected it's from mm-hmm. the Shield match. You know? Yeah. And there's only so much that you can have Sheamus and Orton do when they have to share the spotlight. Oh yeah. Big stars in their own right. So I would have actually loved to see this match in false count anywhere because to me, like the Shield seems a little bit like their guerrilla tactics people. 
Imagine like if it was on like the stage or something. Like they tr- they tossed Big Show off the stage or something. Yeah, how long it would have took. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, was that stage big enough? By the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Look, do you see the pictures like uh, of like people that complained? Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of people complaining. Some dude, like, he got placed right smack down in the center of the bridge, and he's like, I can't see anybody come out. There was a lot. They did a lot of refunds. Mm-hmm. For both in person and uh, on pay-per-view. So, I mean, decent match. Decent opening yeah. match for yeah. us. Yeah. I'd yeah. give it a 3. I'd give it a 3.5. Five. You didn't have to give it a number. Anyway. Well, you asked in the beginning, like, on a scale of 1 to 5. I know, but he didn't do it, and I just asked whatever. Well, that's because I didn't really want to give it a 4. <laughs> And I felt like three wasn't good enough, so I was kind of with John. It was kind of like right in the middle. <laughs> so moving on. Second match of the night was Ryback versus Mark Henry. Now, Brian, you uh, your exact words here was, uh, this has the potential to be a new rivalry between the big men and a way for Ryback to earn some in-ring cred I, for one, believe he needs. Giving this to Ryback. Sucks to be Ryback. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I really thought, you know, Mark Henry's day, in my opinion, is gone. Mark Henry was a player in the Attitude Area. I mean, the guy's been wrestling, yeah. what, 15, going on 20 years, if you count, before WWE. Okay. Like, 90, late 90s. He really yeah. didn't need the push that, for some reason, they apparently seem to be giving him. Mm-hmm. Especially after you saw Raw Monday. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, it was... I expected a lot more. This is probably my most... Eh, one of the more disappointing matches for me in the night. I expected more instead of just, like, a shoving match. It wasn't really... You know, I want to see these guys throw each other around. A little more than just, like, big gorillas. Like. <laughs> now, did it remind you? Did you watch WrestleMania 20? I was actually just about to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. No, I didn't see that. It was it took exactly... Them tw- it took them 20 fucking minutes just to do a standing lockup. All they yeah, would do was circle the ring match. for 20 minutes. Really? It was horrible. Even Austin, Austin was a special guest ref. He was oh, getting mad. Sucks. He was like, you guys need to start doing shit. And they were just mm-hmm. pushing each other. It was horrible. Both those guys suck. Go watch right. that mm-hmm. match. Now, John, you didn't pick a winner. You simply wrote, Ryback versus Mark Henry, Henry will be a battle of the muscle. That is all you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> That's some technical blogging yeah, there, buddy. <laughs> right there. <laughs> well, I mean, like, like, it was just, like, it literally was battle of the muscle, but it was exactly like Goldberg. Was it Mark Henry's little muscle? <laughs> <laughs> His tiny, insignificant all right, all right, muscle. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to hear that. Oh... But I mean, like, I really want a Ryback to win that one because, to me, Mark Henry doesn't seem like the guy that is going to be staying around much longer in, like, this era. And I feel that Ryback is going to be kind of taken over as that character. Really? Even though he's 0-6 at pay-per-views right now? Yeah, I'll lose some to win some. I don't get WWE's reasoning <laughs> behind this. Hey, it's, it's like it's, he came out, he was on an undefeated streak, and all of a sudden he's been down ever mm. since. It's probably because he was getting Goldberg comparisons. Yeah, like the Goldberg. So they Ryan feel the need to separate him from Goldberg. <clears throat> You're the only one who thinks he, they were comparing him to RVD, just because of the tights. Really? Yeah, that's well, he that's, gets them from the same guy. I don't. I don't really feel you could mention R- RVD and Ryback don't even mm. really belong in the same. It's two different classes <laughs> of wrestler. So did the match. Disappoint you at all or anything? Truth is, I was actually really disappointed with it because I wanted Ryback to win the match with the shell shock on Mark Henry. I didn't want Mark Henry just to squash him. That was odd. I didn't expect yeah. that, that, the ending to that. Yeah, match. no, neither did I. But he just kind of drops him. Oops, he fell on me. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was one of those things where they, they did screw up. Mm. You know, and they're like, oh shit, well, we better do something mm-hmm. about this. You know, I don't know. Well, I'm just saying, though, if Ryback can do a double shell shock on fucking Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex at the same time, I'm pretty sure, well, obviously he lifted Mark Henry. Well, yeah, we did get it, just yeah. not for the win. Mm-hmm. Kind of cheap. Yeah. Like I said, it was one of the matches I expected to be better and just didn't I, pan out. I ended up going with Ryback on it, even though I wrote technically, um, Ryback is a green character and could use the win, but a returning Henry could as well if WWE hopes to uh, up his storyline somewhere in the year. I'd like to see Henry win, but I'm going to have to go with Ryback. Should have kept the original man. Should have won with the brothers. Right. No love for the brothers. No love for the black athletes. Man. If it ain't Ron Simmons. <laughs> oh. Damn. Yeah, really. Next match was the uh, the tag match. Hell no. Mm. Team Hell No versus Dolph Ziggler and Big E Langston. Uh, right off the bat, I will say I had that wrong. I wrote that they were going up against Rose Scholars, which I think they should have. I, I think so. Too. You know, I don't even remember who I picked for that match. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, thank God for blogs, because I don't remember. <laughs> 
John, you wrote uh, Team Hell No will suffer a big loss as they lose the goal to some start upstart tag team. Well, technically, but he didn't name an upstart tag team. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, Dolph Ziggler and Big E are kind of just a new thrown together tag team. But I mean, it was a throwaway match. It, it was. was yeah. It really was. I don't, I'm tired of seeing them hold the belts. I'm glad there's longevity there, but I don't think it should be them. Well, did you hear? Uh, oh fuck! I forgot. He didn't even watch Raw. I know what happened. I read the results. Right. Well, you know how, like, Team Hell Now came out for Undertaker when the Shield came out? Yeah. Well, apparently the, the plan is, for right now, is having the Shield face Hell No for the tag titles in Extreme Rules mm-hmm. and have them lose to the Shield. So, and I know uh, Shield's supposed to be working with Undertaker at the house shows. Three on one. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super lame. <laughs> Not as lame as your prediction, dude. What was my prediction? Team Hell No versus the Prime Time Players. No! Wow. Millions of dollars! With their dysfunction and anger towards one another still brewing, I could see Team Hell No dropping this one to the primetime players. Not what I'd like to see, but it's bound to happen. Hey, man, at the time of writing the blog, I believe they were pushing those guys a little heavily. <laughs> and they were on every Raw, they were on every SmackDown. You can't call them all. Yeah, yeah. I really did end with you, though. I wanted Road Scholars. That's mm-hmm. who should have the belt. The intellectual savior of the masses. The guy needs a push, man. He does. He could be the biggest heel of the WWE. They're just wasting him. Wasting him. You know, I gotta say, I do like him as, as Cody Rhodes' tag partner. They work together. Cody doesn't yeah, have that look up. that can really put him with somebody. Maybe Ted DiBiase, when they first came out as Legacy, it worked. But I can't see him with anybody else, you know? I remember, man, you were talking, and you said, like, The Miz could have been possible. That's a good point. I still but that was the, if wrestling. The Miz is a heel. Right, not right not yeah. Not as a yeah. Choice. <laughs> All right, well, before we get to the next match, let's go ahead and just discuss that then. Um, I don't understand why they threw the Intercontinental title match on a pre-show. Yeah, that was a waste, and why was it The Miz? Yeah. Why build up this rivalry between Cesaro and The Miz to just toss it? Yeah. And, and then Wade Barrett and The Miz. That was totally a match worthy of WrestleMania. So, I mean, they, they did. There was a whole build-up for months and months and months. The Miz, Antonio mm-hmm. Cesaro, it just never panned out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. It's because it's a uh, truth is McMahon actually hates Cesaro. Yeah, he hates the character and he hates just the idea of him. I'm like, really? Cesaro's wow, a great. He's athlete. pretty good. <laughs> See, McMahon's original idea before he decided to scrap it, and I think it totally would have stole the show. Mm-hmm. Was a double ladder match for the IC and the US belt. The winner could win either both belts or walk away with one. That. Would have been crazy. Oh, yeah. That would have been an excellent match. Yeah. That, and it would have been a good way to unify them and get rid of one. Back to the match, though. I really thought that was going to be like the quickest WrestleMania match ever. Mm-hmm. And I actually, Daniel Bryan earned some respect with me. That guy's got some moves, man. Oh, yeah. For a little dude, that guy can wrestle, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, I think they need to get him away from Kane. Mm. They need to push all their other belts, man. And then they've, I really don't feel like they do. I feel like the tag team's dead. The Intercontinental thing is dead. Yeah. The, um, what is it, the American title? U.S. title. U.S. title. And yeah. So many goddamn titles they change every day. You need to bring back the hardcore title. Well, heck That's yeah. That's what I was saying the whole fucking night. <laughs> Well, the hardcore title showcased all the little guys people wanted to see. If they brought that back, we wouldn't have this discussion. I mean, why couldn't WrestleMania have just been a night of champions? And just we, throw the belts out, man. Make it more interesting. Because they already have a pay-per-view where all the title belts are on the line. What they do? It's called Night of Champions. Well, see, I, I loop for too long. I guess. <laughs> well, what the fuck? <laughs> now, that match delivered you at all? It was okay. I mean, yeah, you got what you expected. It was a throwaway match. Mm. You agree? Yeah. I mean, obviously they weren't going to drop the belts to Biggie Langs yeah. and Dolph Ziggler. That's not going to happen. However, though, I really thought that, like, when Dolph Ziggler and them would lose, that Dolph would cash in that night. Mm. You know, we would see yeah, the first... Yeah, so did I. Yeah, we, we would see the first person to cash in at WrestleMania. Oh, so there's never been a cash in at WrestleMania? Not at WrestleMania. See, I was totally expecting that. It's, all, it's always usually... But I guess we can talk to that when we get to that. That match. Uh, next match, nobody got this right because none of us had any. Clue. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Jericho versus Von Dango. I like saying that. <laughs> really, I know. It kind of it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian, you had Chris Jericho going up against Dolph Ziggler. You know, that made sense to me, man. Mm. It made sense. Jericho had just come back. Ziggler had put Jericho out yeah. before. It made sense for that match to happen. Man, the Fandango thing just came out of left field, really, within the last mm. couple weeks before WrestleMania. But, hey, how awesome for that guy, you know? Oh, yeah. He got his first match, really, as Fandango, anyway. Yeah, his debut. His, his debut. His actual yeah, debut at, at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. How many I mean, people who the hell gets that? that? Yeah. Biggie Langston. Yeah, but 
Yeah, you know, <laughs> he was riding on the coattails of Dolph Ziggler, so it doesn't really yeah. count. Well, you wrote, and I quote, I love Ziggler, and he doesn't need to win this match to work his way into a title shot. Y2J needs to build some momentum. Of course, I could be wrong, and Ziggler could win due to interference by Biggie, possibly setting up a feud between the two. Then again, Y2J does owe Ziggler for getting him fired last year. Not sure this match is confirmed, but if it is, I'd give it to Jericho. Now, if it's not WrestleMania, would be the prime place for Ziggler to cash in his Money in the Bank case. Yeah, sure. But what a lackluster match that was, huh? Like, how many damn times did Fandango try and do that leg drop off the top mm-hmm. rope? Like, six, seven? It was, it was one of the... That was, that was the worst well, match of the night. That, like, one of the times that he was going to do it, it looked like he was going to slip. Yeah. And Jericho Jericho kind of saved him by... Uh, I think it's a horrible finisher. It really is. He needs mm. something else. You don't like yeah. it? Nah. That face kick, dude, is amazing, though. He should have something like... <laughs> he does, like, a dance twist or something, and he's like, oh, oh, yeah. that he brings the knee up and hits you or something, you know? I don't know. Yeah, like, they should incorporate it. Now that you well. mention it, I can think that he could be kind of like a Tajiri. Use the buzzsaw kick, but make it more flashy. Yeah. Like, dance-wise. There's something you can do. Yeah. Uh, now, John, you didn't put... The only thing you... Obviously, like I said, none of us expect this on Yeah. Time, but, yeah. Uh, like I said earlier... <laughs> You put Y2J in the match with the Shield. Yeah, so. I mean, I was actually like surprised when I actually heard about this. I thought this would be like the short ass WrestleMania match. I thought Jericho would just get him in the walls, of Jericho, and he would tap out right away. When I saw him win, I was like, Holy "Yeah, shit. right." Who expected that yeah. to beat Jericho, <laughs> especially with the suckiest his wrestling skills looked? Mm. <laughs> it was just a terrible match, dude. It was a ter- I don't know whose fault that was. Probably Fandango's, but it just it looked like crap, man. Yeah, and you said he was a good wrestler. Ooh, so I expected more, yeah. First match, mm-hmm. WrestleMania, you kind of get the jitters. Give it some time. Um, as far as yeah. this match, like I said, I had Jericho. I put Jericho in this as well. I said, if Jericho isn't somehow involved in the match with the Shield, this would be the only other place I can picture him, and that's versus Dolph Ziggler. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could also see him losing it. Uh, wait, I said, of course, the win should and probably will go to Ziggler. I could also see him losing it, though, just so he cashes in Money in the Bank during the uh, heavyweight t- title match. Still going with Ziggler and Amy match, they play cement. Yeah, so much for that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? He's a good worker. He's a workhorse. Um, yeah. The vibe backstage, <clears> supposedly, <throat> after he won the title Monday night, was very high. And everybody was Dude, just the like, crowd everybody, reaction was insane. Oh, yeah. Just like, like I was just didn't and, expect it. Like, I'm like, that guy's a heel. No one yeah. likes him. Mm-hmm. He wins the belt. Everyone liked the whole fucking crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, he got a better reaction than John Cena does. Which, oh, I, yeah. by the way, I love John Cena's reaction. Oh. I love that it's half like, ah, and the other half's like, boo, it's yeah. the best. <laughs> yeah, he does get one of the best reactions, however you, way you look at it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that was a horrible throwing match, and it would have been, I think they should have done, and just, like, right in the beginning, just cut it real fast. Oh, yeah. Should have been the quickest. Yeah. Now, the next match, they are ladies, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> I'm reading something that says ladies. Uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Jack Swagger versus Alberto. Uh, you know, I'm not going to keep going. Okay. No! no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, Swagger versus Del Rio. Let's see what. Uh, well, I'm already on mine, so we'll see what I said. Where the hell did I even have that? So unfucking professional. <laughs> yeah, you know, I tell you. You, you know, think he'd have been prepared? You know how us Puerto Ricans are. He was talking the other night about how he was oh, all excited is. about this. Mm-hmm. He's completely unfucking prepared. <laughs> I'm on the page. All right, I uh, I got. It was a scripted, by the way, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I quote: "This one can go both ways. ADR is getting a nice boost in popularity due to his face turn. Swagger's getting the proper heel heat, but in my opinion." Only because of the mouthpiece, Zeb Coulter. Uh, making Swagger champ would give ADR a valid reason to go after his rematch at Extreme Rules. Not having Swagger win, it could also be a form of punishment for him with his run-in on the, with the law a few weeks back. But I have to go with my Latino people on this one and side with ADR. <laughs> it was a given. That one was a given. Yeah? You didn't think Swagger had a chance at all? Fuck no. I don't even think Swagger deserved to be in that match. Jeez. We the people! No, you forgot we the people. <laughs> that guy can't <laughs> fucking speak at all, man. And you know what? I watched some old promos of him before he was with Zeb Coulter, before yeah, he went out. So and he... He was horrible. Like, he just... It seemed like he just picked up the list now. Mm. No, he's always... Oh, no, has he's he always had... Always had always I guess I didn't watch enough promos. Uh, John? It was hilarious because, like, people would actually call him out on it later on. And he'd be like, I don't have a list. Yeah. Mm. It's not that he has a list. Lisp. Nah, you used to have him talk like this. Boy, shit's cut. Um, 
Yeah. That guy should never talk. Never talk. Well, that's why, well, that's why they chose the phrase "we the people" because it's something he can say cleanly. Yeah. <laughs> well, John, you had Jack Swagger winning the belt from ADR. The truth is, I really wanted him to win the belt because I think with Zeb Coulter as a mouthpiece, he could seem more more heelish. Because when he was just a regular heel by himself, he wasn't believable with Dan for anything. <clears throat> I agree. He couldn't pull off anything. I agree. He just he just sucks. I, I'm not a fan at all. Not a fan at all. He he relies too much on like the Matt style. He really does think that this is still like the NCAA and stuff. That it's always just gonna be Matt style, which doesn't have any ring awareness. No no mic skills at all either. Mm. Well, uh, Batman like those YouTube <coughs> videos. He just he just stands there in the back with his arms. But I thought the one that were ADR and uh, Ricardo Rodriguez mm-hmm. making fun of those him. are the aw- those are <laughs> awesome. See that one? Yes, it's like taco. Yes, <laughs> burrito. <laughs> uh, B, you had uh you said, I hate Swagger, and I personally don't don't believe he deserved a title shot. Alberto Del Rio all the way. So you were, uh, I don't even like Alberto Del Rio. I think he's annoying. I think he had the quickest heel-to-face turn I have ever fucking seen. Ever. I'm just saying. Like, the guy runs over Santa Claus, and the next time you see him, he's <laughs> he's a face. It was I, too fast. I don't like him as a face. To me, like to me, he just doesn't seem like he's pulling it off right. And then there was all this talk about how he was going to integrate a more luchador style. I'm still waiting to see that. <laughs> but no, that was... Wait for El Generico to come. Wait for El Generico to come. <laughs> oh, yeah. forgot about that. A Canadian masked luchador. <laughs> nice. Jesus. Hence the name. Yeah. So on, on to the match we all really watched the pay-per-view for. <laughs> the next match. CM Punk versus Undertaker. Now, I just got a side note here, according to Russell's own. Undertaker's entrance time, gong to the music fade. Four minutes and 29 seconds. <sighs> That's a long ass entrance. Yeah. But it was a cool entrance. Not to have the arms come up. Yeah, or whatever. That was really, really cool. That was pretty cool. Alright, so CM Punk versus Undertaker Brian, what's your thoughts? That should have they should have just ended the streak, man. Yeah. If anyone's if anyone's time is over, it's Undertaker's. I'll give you this that. This is 20, 20 years now going on. It's, you're done, son. He looked bad. In yeah. my opinion, Punk made that match look good. Oh I yeah. Agree. I, and, I totally agree. And I know that, you know, realistically, does Punk really, did Punk need to end the streak for, to, you know, to push his career at all? Not at all. No. But would have been nice, you know, yeah. notching the belt for CM Punk. Right, right, right. I agree. Of course, well, I'm a damn, you know me already. So. <laughs> Punk for life over yeah. there. Let's <laughs> see, yeah, you actually wrote, Brian, you wrote, I'm so looking forward to this. I really want to see Punk win this one. It would do a lot for him to be the guy that breaks the streak, but will the WWE allow that to happen? Sometimes you can't mess with perfection. Yeah, apparently I was right. (laughs) I mean, the guy needs to retire. He looks like shit. Mm. He looks like shit. Still wearing that eye makeup after 20 years. It's probably the same pencil. The horrible (laughs) ass, yeah, right? The horrible ass mohawk. Like, dude, Mm. come on. John, you got Undertaker will be CM Punk in traditional WrestleMania fashion. I have pretty much summed it up. Yeah. You know? The thing is, though, I was really disappointed with this match. I it mean, was something about it. I mean, like, I think it, was it like, felt too short. I mean, like, yeah, sure, like, there were, like, those few couple of moments where, like, oh, that was cool, but it was nothing that was, like, really standout-ish. Yeah, nothing really. Actually, the standout moment was CM Punk's final attempt to trying to pin the Undertaker when he did the arms folded in, in yeah. classic uh, Undertaker. Yeah, oh, the I thought, it, in the I thought it was the. Uh, oh, that was the. When shit. he did the top and elbow on the announcer table. And it, oh yeah. yeah, I thought from the first, the original angle that they showed it at, it looked like he hit the table side, like with his side with his yeah. legs. But then when they showed the replay, he actually landed just barely on it. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was funny when he threw the old school in his face. You know, I don't oh, think yeah, yeah totally. Really, you know, do it more than once. Yeah. But for even for the first time, I was surprised he did it. The one thing I noticed that looked kind of weird uh, was him trying to get Taker up for the GTS. It's like uh, he was too damn short and Taker's body was too damn lanky. It's yeah. like you lift him up, and his fucking feet are almost touching the floor <laughs> anyway. It's like, what are you doing? You know? You know, for Undertaker being a guy that gets out there and helps push guys and, and in the past has put through great performances, I expected a lot more out of him. Mm. You know who's, like, in my book, top for doing that right now? Jericho. Yeah. Jericho is the man to come mm-hmm. back. It's not selfish at all. He comes back, goes on a great losing streak, but he pushes everybody he's working with. Mm-hmm. Then he goes, records an album, does a tour, and he comes back. Yeah. It's like, that's a consistent part time. I can deal with that. It gets beat up mm-hmm. by Fandango. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he goes and makes a record about it. That's where Jericho doesn't make like a statement like, oh, I'm leaving or anything. He's just yeah. gone. He's just quiet about yeah. it. You know, he's like, it's not even him leaving, leaving. Mm-hmm. It's temporary. Mm-hmm. You know? So those were your uh, 
your thoughts on that match. My the way I wrote it was uh, Undertaker Mania matches are a huge deal for his opponents. Defeating Taker and ending the streak would no doubt make their career, but Punk at this point doesn't need it. He's established his legacy already and admitted that he's only got a few years left in his tank. In a heartbeat, I side with Punk because he's from my hometown and I'm a huge fan. I'm also wearing a Best in the World t-shirt as I type this, but I know when to admit that Punk winning just wouldn't work. I, I, I'm doing it while I was here. Jeez. I saw that fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who was trying to make a name for himself should have the honor of ending it, but if it ends before we ever get a Taker Sting match, I'll shed a tear. Yeah, I don't. You might as well start mm-hmm. crying, son. We were going to Toys R Us, and I was telling him just like the like the best way Sting should come in and do it. And now, and after I told him, he's just like, "Damn, now I really want it to happen." Yeah, yeah. And he just, the way he described it was, just, "Do it. Go ahead and describe it." Well, this like, is Sting coming in. Sting versus Taker WrestleMania mm-hmm. 30. If they had decided to go with this, go ahead. And I was telling Junior, just like, okay, like Undertaker, like he just beat Punk. And, like, he did, like, the thing in the center of the ring where he raises his head, and, like, they launch off fireworks, and, like, the lights go dark, and you see a spotlight just hit, like, one of the corners of the ring, and you see Sting rappel down, and he holds up the black bat and points it as Undertaker, and he points up to, like, the Tron or whatever, and you see WrestleMania 30 pop across the screen. Lights go off, Sting is gone. That would have been nice. Yeah. I was trying to look on the TV, is he coming down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is he coming down? Is it going to happen? And the one that's the like the one WCW acquisition that never came over, isn't mm-hmm. it? They've supposedly negotiated in the past. Yeah, yeah they tried they to just could well. never. It was just always back and forth. I don't know. Well, I wouldn't say it'd be an epic match if, if it goes the same way that the punk on yeah the punk on it. You know, one, but I it's the rule. I don't know because they're both up there in age, not mm-hmm. punk but Sting and Taker. Yeah. So I think it'd be an even match because yeah. they they're both limited. You know, mm-hmm. like you said, will it happen? I don't know. I, obviously, everybody has the dream match. That's, I think, the only dream match left. What else yeah. is there? Besides Punk, uh, Punk versus Austin. Oh, yeah, Punk Austin. Yeah, that was but, see, you really can't count that because <laughs> it's current generation right, being yeah. Punk versus Austin. Whereas mm-hmm. Sting and Taker were both old school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's no other matches that I can think of. Any other dream matches that are out there are, like I said, using... Uh, I, I don't want to say current because then Taker is still the current star. And Sting is still current. Uh, apparently, Taker uh, must sell the shit out of T-shirts because okay. to just bring him back once a year for one match, mm-hmm. I think it's doing a disservice to the, the younger guys trying to come up. Really, mm-hmm. I think a lot of these guys just need to like done, move on. You, you, I think both Punk and Taker both had great entrances. Oh yeah, of course Taker's was super long, yeah. but it was a great entrance nonetheless. You called the first one, and, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, that was that was nice. Playing Punk, that was pretty cool. Well, how would you say? Like, how'd you should have acknowledged them though. Yeah. I felt he like did. there should... Did he? Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, now he walked out. He, yeah. walked, he was talking to me. He was doing one of those. Yeah, what did you say, like, when, like, you first came out? Didn't you say, like, it was, like, their first gig in, like, 40 oh, years? Oh, yeah. I was like, like, how happy they are. It was, like, their first gig in, like, 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's so They're, like, they volunteered to do it for free. So mean. <laughs> um, but, you know, my closing thought... Well, Brian, what are your closing thoughts with this Undertaker Punk match? It, you know, it was... It sucked. It sucked. I Punk carried the match, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, if there were any good highlights, it was because of Punk. Clearly showed Undertaker. It's just done. He's what's, the, what's the saying? I think you know it. Um, you know you're a great wrestler if you can wrestle a broomstick and put the broomstick over with the fans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I I hate to use that here, but I think that's what happened. Because mm. you saw the look of my, on my face after that match. I was just kind of yeah. just like I wanted to cry. <laughs> So look at him like that I'm taking a slice of pizza it, and I'm leaving. It, it left it left you wanting more. It just mm-hmm. it didn't seem long for one. None of the matches on this pay per view actually seem long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you no. know they all seem pretty quick. And then when you re- we'll get to it, what I was going to say in a minute, but yeah, they just all seem. So mm-hmm. your final thoughts on it, John? Well, um, like it left me wanting more. I felt that like it was very empty. That there really wasn't much going for it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it just there's something there was something missing. It, it, it felt bland to me. Yeah, I it agree. felt like just getting a sandwich with bread and turkey. That's it, nothing else. Nothing mm-hmm. to drink, wash it down. Nothing to drink to wash it down. Wow. Just boom. Oh, damn, nice and Cambodian breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> like some bologna on hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, dude. It, it was it left me wanting more. Yeah. You know what? This next <laughs> match, I honestly thought to me was the match of the night. Yeah. Mm. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. It had its moments. You know, yeah. it's starting at the beginning when, like, I was trying to decipher what that powder was all over. Did you see what it was? I did. I did. It yeah. Turned out I, it was, I, I uh, did. I did. It was ice. It was dry oh, ice. Dry ice. And they, oh. they posted photos. He burnt all his side. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, at at first, you know, I, I jokingly told my friend, I'm like, look, I'm like, he was doing a bunch of coke and busting <laughs> all over his pants and looking now Brock's that's all what, excited. That's what someone said to us, too, so it was just like he was just doing coke. It looked to me like Brock was going to attack his crotch area and snort it dry. Yeah. <laughs> F5. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, it was all right. It was okay. Somebody pointed it out to me yesterday, I believe it was. I don't remember. They said, and, and I, you know what, I got to agree, Triple H, Triple H without the long hair, he does not seem dude. intimidating. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. You know? He looks strange. He does. His forehead wrinkles stand up really <laughs> hard, man. Like, damn, like, I, when I first saw him, when he came back, I'm like, damn, where are the forehead wrinkles? I, like, I didn't <laughs> notice them before. Right. Mm-hmm. But now with the lack of hair, they're just so prominently there, you know? <laughs> well, this match should have been more personal. Mm. I think Stephanie McMahon should have came out. You know, I think Vince McMahon should have came out. I yeah. think Sable should have come out. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, so he didn't say one Brock Lesnar. Okay, yeah, that's okay. right. I had to think for, for I was thinking. They got like two kids or something like yeah. that. Wow. I'm just saying, though, like, the thing that's like pissed me off with the whole Triple H Brock Lesnar thing is they haven't acknowledged what happened in 2002. When Brock Lesnar first won the title in 2002, he absolutely refused to face Triple H. And I really wish that they played on that. You know, even just like a little bit, just for like Triple H to like, they even like just ask for the match. Just mind games or something. Yeah, just play mind games with them. I would really like that if they acknowledge that. Because mm-hmm. WWE doesn't do that anymore. They don't acknowledge the post-war era. Yeah. They don't acknowledge, like, anything that happened after the Attitude Era came to a close. It's like the new 52. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the see, only see, comics see. reference for the yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Here's your comics reference. <clears throat> Thank you. See, we just tied it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I went ahead and said that uh, Triple H was going to get the win, but they'd tie him at 1-1, and they'd have their rubber match at Extreme Rules, and that would be the match that, like, actually deliver, mm. you know? But see, that's such bullshit, though. I mean, shouldn't every match deliver? Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like, we don't... That's. That, I feel like Vince McMahon has fallen into this era of, like, let's give it to him, but not. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're going to give you it, but it's going to be watered down a week, and we're going to drag it out, and they're going to wrestle, like, ten fucking times. And that tenth one, <laughs> and it's going to be the shit. John, you had Triple H will beat Brock Lesnar, and in parentheses, you wrote... I have a feeling some stipulation would be placed on this match. Mm. You called that one correct. Right. The thing is, though, crappy like... Stipulation. Yeah. Crappy stipulation. Yeah, right. Wasn't it the same one from SummerSlam? Wasn't Still No Holds Barred from uh, SummerSlam? I think it was. I was kind of really? But that's better than the original plans I heard. I heard that they wanted to do, like, a lion's den or some shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, really? I had this messed up feeling the Monday before when Triple H and Shawn Michaels had the little confrontation about how, oh, you know, you talk about how we're, we're in the same position, but I really, for some reason, felt like it was an opportunity for Shawn Michaels to fuck over Triple H. Yeah. And I was kind of banking on that to happen for some reason. Well, the truth is, I actually <laughs> heard that uh, at the year before WrestleMania, but like, before that, while they were still planning it, they really wanted, at the end, for Shawn Michaels to either super kick Triple H or just do something to actually cause a Shawn Michaels versus Triple H match at WrestleMania. Now, and I was really hoping at the end of this match that when Shawn Michaels and Triple H were leaving, that Shawn would just step back and super kick him. I was really hoping for that. Mm-hmm. I think again, Shawn's in a position where he doesn't need to come back. Yeah. You know. But then again, though, we've seen Triple H versus Shawn Michaels... Yeah. 87 times. And they're not. <laughs> they're not the greatest. Brian, you wrote, I love both of these guys, but I want to see Triple H whoop that ass. Should be a tremendous fight between these two titans of the ring. I think Triple H, but really, I don't care who wins. This match will be good. It was good. Mm-hmm. I did like it. Um, I some You know, towards the end there, when uh, Triple H had Brock in that lock or whatever. Oh, lock. Yeah, that's just like, really... Three times Brock picked him up, slammed him on the yeah. stairs desk, but Triple H kept going back to the lock. Mm-hmm. And if anything, why didn't Brock just break his arm the first time he had him in the lock? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Or why did Triple H do it to him? Why were the steel step slams so pussy? Like, I mean, yeah. they got better as they went on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, the first time I'm like, just slam the fucking shit out of him. <laughs> just go for it. Right. Like, what has happened to these wrestlers now? They've got no fucking balls, dude. Yeah. Where are the McFoley's, dude? Where are the guys that weren't afraid to take some, some hits, dude, to make the shit look good to sell it? Right. I was waiting for that the whole time. Like, the sledgehammer hits to the face with your palm and the sledgehammer. It's just lame. Let me hit you with a fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> I'm, not, well, I'm not saying the sledgehammer should have been involved at all. Okay. I'm just saying the whole idea of it's fucking just not, it's stupid. Right. Mm-hmm. But then they're like, oh, let me run up here and just, <laughs> come on. It's it just, looks good. Yeah. Uh, you know. I'm just saying that I like how when Triple H ran at him, Brock Lesnar just put his hand up. Yeah. I want to catch him with my fist. Yeah, totally. 
I mean, it's one thing if you do it very last second. Yeah. The timing is everything. Brock was just like, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> and, and yeah, way to sell that shit, Brock. <laughs> way to sell it. All right, that takes us to... Dan, I'm just saying, I really wanted there to be right, blood in this match. You what? I really blood. wanted to be blood. I wanted, like, I was Brock, very, Yeah, I was surprised. I wanted Brock to be... I the only blood Brock. that came out of the whole pay-per-view was uh, Shawn Jericho. Michael. Well, Shawn Michaels was oh, there. Oh, his mouth, yeah, but yeah. Jericho, like, right above his eye. Oh, yeah. Pond Dago cut him with his heel, high heel or something. Right. This is tap dancing shoes. Uh, <laughs> shit. Which brings us to the final match of the card. WWE Championship match, The Rock versus John Cena. John, did this match deliver? Out of the parts that I saw... Yeah, for some reason... I gotta stop you real quick. For some reason, when this match came on, everybody in the living room just kind of tuned it out. We were all just talking amongst ourselves. <laughs> we were just talking and about... And like, we looked back and all like, like, you know, nice. punched them. So, anyway... <laughs> 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 yeah, like, nobody was paying that, attention that to that the first half of the match. That just shows you how much she just didn't care about the match. But I mean, like, in the middle, like, I was seeing glances and I was like... Yeah, towards the middle, that's when we all started paying attention. And I was like, okay, like, it looks like it's getting a little bit technical, but then, like, towards the end, I was just like, okay, it looks like an exact repeat of last... Last year, my bad. Last <laughs> year! <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, right, like his balls just no, dropped. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's a match you didn't want to see. Uh, Rock, again, it's another guy, I feel like, his time's over. Yeah. Not that physically he looks like, a, physically the fucking guy looks better than he ever fucking did oh, during yeah. the Attitude Era. The guy is in tremendous shape. No, I'm just saying, he looks like he takes but more steroids than right It's back, It's so. time to just move on, man. It's time to move on. Right. I was very disappointed when he came back and took the ball from CM Punk. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It was just like... I wanted to ride. But it's I like, does Vince that. McMahon hate CM Punk that much that mm. he couldn't just let that ride out a little longer? Yeah. You know, I'm glad he's not holding that belt anymore. On a business standpoint, of course, it makes total sense. The guy's, you know, in all these movies, he's promoting the shit out of the company. It's all about publicity. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. Because the money comes from the ratings. People want to tune in and watch The Rock. That's, I mean, it's a fucking no-brainer. But as far as the inside, you know, the wrestling fans, and what what did it do, you know? The Rock was on, what, half the Raws from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. About it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and all he did was talk. He didn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, pure promos. Maybe a rock bottom. The Rock career. concert. Yeah, the Rock yeah. concert. I'm just saying, though, like, He if, defended it yeah. once, and you knew he was going to keep it. The Rock concert was awesome. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, if, Seriously, like, you, you didn't like when he serenaded Vicky Guerrero? <laughs> It was typical rock. You expected. Mm, yeah. I thought that was great, her, man. He's going to call her a biatch. Still to this day, I drive around and think, you dress like a girl, <laughs> not the expensive guy. It's the best. That was some vintage rock, man. Yeah. Vintage. All right, Michael. Mm. I'm just saying, though, if... I like how people are vintage when they've only been at the company for a few months. Oh, yeah. Vintage Fandango! Like, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> he dropped one leg drop. It's vintage. I hate Michael Cole. <laughs> I'm thinking we're him bring back Joey Styles. We should go yeah, back. Shit. I love to... Oh, my God! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, my God! Yeah. That guy was the shit, man. <laughs> Then he did, every, talking, he did everything solo. He didn't need anybody else. Yeah, right. Man. He didn't need it. He talked to himself. This is Joey Styles over here. It's <laughs> ECW. Like, whoa, dude. The, my dream announcing team for WWE would be Joey Styles and Jr. <laughs> oh, my face was flying. Actually, oh my god, I did. <laughs> <laughs> be the best. Be the best. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. Do it again. I said, my, my face is flying. <laughs> I'm just broken. I cannot poop that on my face. And then Joey Styles would chime in. <laughs> oh, no, my God! <laughs> it's a joke! <laughs> now, let's just clarify. We're not making fun of the stroke victim here. <laughs> not that. It's just the great pairing. You know, if you want to speak good on our teams, give me back the heel Jerry Lawler. Mm. With JR. And for some reason... They were the best announced team, really. Yeah. For WWE. Mm. But you know what? Bobby Heenan. Oh, the man. brain. Bobby Heenan, man. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, all in the 90s, man. Not when he was in WCW. Mm-hmm. WCW kind of mellowed out, but back when he was with WWF, it was hilarious as an announcer. Mm-hmm. Him and uh, Gorilla. Mm-hmm. That was just, that was great time, man. He was just sitting there riding everybody. <laughs> you know, he got he gave nobody any slack. And I mean nobody. Mm-hmm. So Rock versus Cena, how, what were your final thoughts and feelings on Rock Cena? It was very predictable. You knew yeah. Cena was going to win. And this was the only time that I can remember in recent history that I cheered John Cena. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not what they, I'm not a John Cena (laughs) hater, but I don't, like, he's not my favorite wrestler or whatever. I I give the guy all kinds of fucking respect. He sucks, you could say it. No, he doesn't suck. Um, I don't like him at all. 
I give him all the credit in the world for doing what he does and sticking with it and going out there every night, even though he knows the fans want to fucking shoot him or something. You know, I give him all the credit in the world. And honestly, the belt is where it should be, around his yeah. waist as opposed to being around the rock. No, I agree. I agree. It should never be with the rock at all. Um, I like the end of the match, though, when he pumped mm-hmm. rock out, pretending he was going to do the people's elbow. Yeah, game. that was nice. You know, he punked him out or whatever. But... You know, like you're saying, reversal after reversal after reversal. Yeah. That was pretty stupid, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people, especially the uh, the online internet community, they were saying uh, that WrestleMania is actually better the second time around. Like a lot of people, especially the guy who wrote the results to Wrestle uh, WrestleMania on WrestleZone, said himself that the first time he watched it, he was just like, eh. But then he watched the replay. Mm-hmm. So after he watched the replay, he's like, okay, I can see what it is. He he, uh, he respected it and valued it a little bit more than yeah. the first time around. Which is usually what happens, especially when you watch it with a bunch of people, because your attention is divided, you're making jokes, drinking, eating, having fun, yeah, right. so you're not really into it, as opposed to you watch it exact, like by yourself, you're absorbed into what you're right. watching, and it makes, it brings a lot more, especially the commentators that enhance it. I heard like four commentator words the entire night, because we were just <laughs> all talking most of the time, you know? So, but Brian, for the Rock Cena, you said... This will be the second best match of the evening, Taker and Punk being number one in my opinion. Rock is working out uh, the ring rust and is truly a master of the ring. Cena is coming off the cold streak, and what better way to change all that than winning the WWE Championship? Last time the two met, it was an instant classic. What better way for Rock to make his exit than having a stellar match against Cena and dropping the title to the self-proclaimed new people's champion? I think that's said it all. Wipe your chin, dude. You got a little bit of rock juice in there. <laughs> what, man? The guy's the shit. I He's love me right. some rock. Some classic I attitude arrows I... rock. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. Big boulders. John... Come on, Tom Rita. <laughs> John, We're going to have a party. John Cena will beat The Rock for the WWE title. I'm praying that this match won't be worse than last year's. Dude, I like your predictions. Just shorten to the point. No detail whatsoever. So yeah, you know it. Well, because well, I, I said so. I went into detail. <laughs> I go into detail after I've seen it. Well, it's too late for that. This was a pre-prediction. Well, yeah, honestly. Um, but the truth is, though, the one thing that pisses me off about The Rock the most is when you're a part-timer and you're on comeback for a little bit, you should be wrestling on Raw. Oh, I should, agree. Even just, in a tag match. Yeah, you shouldn't even just be wrestling just strictly for pay-per-views. Yeah, that you was should be, shit. You should be wrestling... Honestly, I'm glad the Rock's Oh, I mean, when they did that throwback night, it would have been sweet to see him and uh, Mick Foley oh, on yeah, some Rock and Sock connection. Yeah, just yeah, for yeah, the hell of it. Cena and, I don't know, Santino Morello? Yeah, right. maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh, see, now there's a match that should have been pre-show uh, that didn't happen. The... I forgot what they're called now, those fat funkers. <laughs> <laughs> tons of funk. Tons of funk. Tons of funk. <laughs> Them and the New Age Outlaws. That should have been on pre-show for WrestleMania. I liked seeing the New Age Outlaws come back. Oh, yeah. I feel like those guys should come back just to try and, like, mm. hoist up the tag team. Well, when, uh, when I saw him face Road Scholars, then Brock That was a good match. It was yeah. starting to be a good match. Yeah. I'm just saying, though, I would have loved it if Road Scholars continued off of that, and then New Age Outlaws would have had a match with them at Mania, because then they would know that. No, that sense. That would yeah, because then... That makes sense. Like, oh, you guys want to take advantage yeah. of us mm-hmm. after we're beat down, you know what I mean? Yeah. And That'd then, like... Cool. E- even so, then Road Scholars wouldn't have been cut due to time constraints. Yeah, they would have been in the show. Yeah. Never yeah. Been. Um, I predict we've seen it a win. <laughs> I just didn't see what the big deal, why you would have the win twice in a row. I just, mm. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. It would have been really pointless. All right, so that wraps up the WrestleMania thing um, as far as discussing the matches. All in all, what do you think? Where does this WrestleMania fall as far as your favorites? Even in your top five? I don't think so. What about you? No, no, nowhere even near my top ten. Wow. You know what? I'd have to agree. I yeah. think this pay-per-view was pure hype, mm. and we ourselves hyped it up, you know, d- discussing the predictions yeah. and then the podcast yeah. and actually watching it. I remember last Sunday, I was just like, oh my, I had a countdown going on Facebook. Yeah, I know, yeah. like every 20 minutes, it's like, oh. You know, four hours and 36 right. minutes till WrestleMania. <laughs> four hours and 27 minutes till WrestleMania. <laughs> you know? Um, Getting way too excited, so. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I did have something else I wanted to ask. For the life of me, I can't remember. But while I try to remember, let's go ahead and look over the predictions that actually didn't happen at all mm. that we got here. Um, not really. Uh, Divas match. Yeah, no Divas uh-huh. match. There was no Divas match. No, no respect for the Divas, yeah, but I can yeah. think it because the Divas suck. That's a good thing. Um, 
<laughs> so for Diva's match, my results was who cares? And then I had Miz versus Wade Barrett, which we know happened on the uh, the pre-show. I gave it to the Miz. Then I had Kofi Kingston versus Antonio Cesaro for the U.S. belt. Truth and, is, uh, I was pissed off that Cesaro was. Not. I gave it to Cesaro. Now John, let's see possible matches: Sheamus versus Wade Barrett for the IC title. Uh, make the title look good for once. <laughs> oh, Caitlyn will probably team with another diva, maybe Layla, to take on Tamina and possibly Rosa Mendez. At the time, that's what they were going for, but right, right. Guess they don't care. <laughs> Brian, you had Antonio Cesaro versus The Miz. Uh, this match has been in the cards for a while, with the rival rivalry being built up the last month or longer. I would see this going to Miz probably with the help of his mentor Ric Flair. You Woo! Had, you had uh, Wade Barrett versus Bo Dallas. Uh, I really don't like Bo Dallas, and I'm confident neither do the fans. Giving this to Barrett, no discussion needed. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, where the fuck did he go? I, I, that's what I was saying earlier. He, he was out for like two weeks. And and just... <laughs> like, I could see that happening. I saw it happen, and then he just disappeared into the ether. It's like... <laughs> That's pretty much it as far as uh, possible matches that we predicted and they didn't come to pass. So we were pretty spot on. Yeah, of course we were. You have any closing thoughts? You've been quiet over there. You watched the pay-per-view. I did. I thought it was kind of lame. I was really stupid for WrestleMania. Should have been better. She's mad because Orton and Jericho lost. Yeah, I am. She's just mad because Mark Henry's got a small Because <laughs> sexual chocolate's more like sexual Tootsie Roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. What a way to end the podcast. Yeah. I'm telling you. We'll be back <laughs> next week. On kind of a high note, not so much for Mark Henry. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, hey, what if it's it, you know? Yeah, he could be talking. You yeah. never know. You know? you seen Ace Ventura. Yeah. So... Thank you guys for listening. Check us out at comicsremix.com. Check us out on facebook.com slash comicsremix. We got a, we're on Twitter. Uh, check us out at thespinnerack.podbean.com. Obviously, you are because you're listening to this, so thank you for thank you much for that. Comics Remix show coming soon. A couple more weeks. Everything's great. Slackers. Headed to C2. <laughs> Fuck you, slackers. We were doing a podcast last week. <laughs> um, C2 is right around the corner. Uh, we will be covering that. Well, that should be fun. Oh, yeah. Better any, be. Any possible things you want to see out of C2E2? I haven't put much thought to it, really. All right. What about you? Uh, well, I already know where you're going. Well, I, ju- I just hope it, it's not as shitty as a Wizard World. How could it be? It's <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting two interviews, and that's it. I don't give a shit about anything else. No. As far as professional. I know I shouldn't say that. What are you going for? It's Morphin Time! What the fuck? Some Power Rangers? <laughs> Yeah. So Tommy, yeah. you're going to like rub your nipples and get all excited about Tommy. Brock Lesnar, Purple Nipple. Yeah. I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop yeah, that was some dude. shit right there, man. <laughs> I'm going to drop it out. That was so weird. Yeah, I can't believe we, we forgot to mention the purple titty. <laughs> Bizarre, man. <laughs> purple titties and Tootsie Roll packages. Wow. Welcome to the Spinner Rack. Yeah. Leave all your comments and questions. <laughs> Spinner Rack at YML.com. <laughs> <laughs> This is always fun. So, like as I said, check us out, comicstreamers.com. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, uh, spinnerack.podbean.com. Uh, email us directly at comicstreamers at gmail. Subscribe on iTunes. Are we on iTunes? Uh, if you go to the Spinnerack page at spinnerack.podbean.com, you can subscribe <laughs> there. Yeah. Look at that. I didn't even know. We're on iTunes. That's badass. <laughs> Did you know we were on iTunes? Did you know? I had no idea we were on iTunes. I got it on my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we'll be back next week, ladies and gentlemen. Issue 5. Gus, uh, Damian Wayne's death, and Grant Morrison as a shitty writer. So uh, be sure to join us. We'll have John with us again, as well as David Sanchez. Dirty David Sanchez. Yep. So thank you for listening for another issue of The Spinner Rack. I'm Junior. I'm Brian Adams. <laughs> no, I'm Jonathan Paparella. <laughs> Thinking about the Mark Henry. Thinking about the Mark Henry. Tootsie, Tootsie Bow! Tootsie Bow! <laughs> we'll see you guys next week with issue five. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. Peace.